Today, we will have a conversation regarding indoor safety at childcare centers. We will be discussing environmental hazards and specifically looking at indoor environmental hazards. In this podcast, our focus will be on school-age children. We have a special guest with us today who will be answering some questions for us and presenting a few scenarios. Our guest is Shivi Gupta, a child care director and a former school teacher with multiple years of experience working with children. This podcast is brought to you by Carabees, an educational training company for child care providers. So Shivi, tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe touch on the types of cases you have been involved in or perhaps are aware of. Hi. So, first of all, thanks to all the child care providers who are joining us on this podcast. My name is Shivi Gupta, and I am currently a site director for an after-school care program. I have been working with children in a variety of settings since 2003. My first experience was actually as a swim instructor when I was in middle school. Since then, I have been teaching children either in informal settings or the classroom setting. Thanks for the background, Shivi. So let's jump right in. Why are we discussing environmental hazards in child care facilities? Well, a child care center's primary goal is the safety and well-being of the children. It is easy to overlook certain environmental hazards or even consider something as a potential threat to safety. One of the best ways to mitigate risks is to train your staff, especially the younger child care providers who mostly have not uh, worked with and or around children extensively. I completely agree. Well-trained staff members are empowered staff members who can make the right call. Exactly. We have all heard of some cases where children were injured or put in harm's way because a staff member did not identify something as a hazard. Let me illustrate a scenario for you. We have a lovely setup for a fun day at a child care center. The carpets are rolled out, cute seating, toys and games are out. A TV is plugged in for a special movie for the kids. A child, let's call this child Liam. Liam is excited and runs to get his spot on the carpet for the movie. Except before he gets there, he trips over the TV extension cord and the TV, which is on a stand, tips over and falls on another child who was too close to the TV. Liam has a scrape on his knee and the other child has a concussion. The worst part is the entire scenario could have easily been prevented. First, let's identify the environmental hazard caused by the setup, or in this case, the two environmental hazards. Number one is the extension cord. It should have never been plugged into an outlet where it would be in the middle of a walkway. It should have been plugged in behind the TV. And if this was not possible, then it should have either been taped down really well, a rug could have been put over it, or the cord should have been barricaded with pylons or chairs so that the kids couldn't walk over it in the first place. The children and staff should have been informed about the extension cord so that they would know not to walk on it and staff members would know to watch any children who may attempt to walk on it. Number two is the placement of the carpet and TV. The carpet should be far enough away from the TV so that even if the TV were to fall, it could not fall on a child. An area around the TV should be designated as off limits with pylons or cones so that children know not to be so close to it. Another point I want to mention is the procedures and rules that were not followed. The child should not have been running, and if they were running, a staff member should have stopped them immediately. Rules should be clear and should be enforced, such as we use walking feet indoors. This is just one example of a possible scenario that could occur. So how can we prevent accidents such as these? All child care providers must control hazards by identifying the hazards. Be aware of surroundings, stay alert, Use use sight and sound to identify hazards. Once you have identified the hazard, remove the hazard if possible. If that is not possible, then make it so that the hazard is contained. Example, putting pylons or chairs around a wet surface. Immediately warn children and all staff about the hazard so that the necessary steps can be taken to mitigate the issue. Now, child care providers must also follow protocols, procedures, and enforce rules. Maybe there is an indoor environment inspection report that one staff member is responsible for completing daily. The children have their own set of rules to follow, such as walking feet only indoors or no horseplay. Prevention should be a priority. This is why checklists, inspections, procedures, and protocols are in place. Prevention includes modifying the environment. Example, 
you notice two children who have tripped and fallen in the same area over the span of the day. You investigate and see that the carpet is frayed and curling. You should probably look into replacing the carpet and for now, remove the carpet. Wow, that was a lot of really great information. We appreciate the examples and the scenario you provided. Sure. I believe it is important to illustrate examples and scenarios as it helps learners consider other examples that they might face in the future and visualize the importance of safety and its applications. Well, that brings us to the end of this podcast on indoor environmental safety in child care centers. If you have other scenarios or examples you have encountered, feel free to share them in the comments below. Thanks for listening, and we hope we were able to provide some guidance to promote the safety and well-being of our children everywhere. Today, we will have a conversation regarding indoor safety at child care centers. We will be discussing environmental hazards and specifically looking at indoor environments.